Alright, so today we're going to look at rendering in Houdini, and specifically we're going to be looking at rendering something that's like a close-up or kind of a macro shot using depth of field and background and, and stuff. I'm going to be using an HDRI from HDRI Haven here, and I've downloaded one. I've downloaded a 2K version, the Artist Workshop 2K. Now if you have enough memory on your machine and you have enough power, I would absolutely recommend using a higher resolution ones. But in this case, since I'm using a shallow depth of field and it's going to be pretty much blurred out anyway, there's not a lot of point in using a really high resolution HDRI. And my computer, this little laptop, just can't quite cut it. So we're not going to use the, the super high resolution ones. It's an excellent site. I definitely recommend HDRI Haven. Um, contribute to them on, on Patreon and, and download uh, awesome HDRIs there. So jumping into Houdini, we need to set up a scene to render. And in this one, we'll do our close up and another video we'll do uh, like a, a kind of a distance, like a long distance render. I'm going to set up first a geometry object, which is going to be our subjects to focus on. And inside of this, open it up, we'll drop down one of their tests, geometry things. This crag guy will work fine. So we get this little rock dude, and just so that we can see the, the difference, I'm going to make some duplicates of this. So we'll add a duplicate. And let's set our display flag so we can actually see it. Let's go ahead and crank this up to 4, I guess. I'm just going to offset these a little bit in the negative z-axis. Ooh, that's too much, too much, too much. Let's offset them more like that. Yeah, about there, I guess. Just so that we can kind of fill the, the camera. Let's actually add another duplicate here. So we've got a bunch of these guys. So kind of an army of crags marching towards us here. Uh, hit gonna hit you, jump back up, we're gonna add a floor to this, so I'll add a grid, and just drop this down. I'll open this up, I'm gonna set this to 2 and 2 for the rows and columns, so we just got one big polygon. And then, when I want to keep this square, um, we zoom out here, we can see it's square right now, rather than having to change two numbers, I'm just gonna copy um, parameter from the X, and then paste relative references on the Z, so we've got this channel uh, size X. Basically, now if I change the x-axis, I'll middle mouse click and drag on that, it'll change both x and z for me. So, one of the many awesome things about Houdini, I'm going to hit U and jump back up. I've got this display handle, the show handle is turned on so I can see this little handle right here. I'm just going to make this a little bit more efficient. So, we're using this more completely. So, I'll move that back a little bit. So, we've got our floor, we've got our little guys here, and we'll go ahead and set up an environment light. Now this is on the lights tab here, we've got our environment light. I'll just click and drop down one of those. Now, I'm going to be using that HDRI as the environment app, so I'm going to click this little drop down here, or click this rather, and we'll go into our textures and just add this Artist Workshop HDRI. And we can actually see this image in here, super handy. So, let's go ahead and zoom in on this. We've got our guys here, and they're ready to kind of march in and, and storm something. Uh, we want to think about our camera placement. Where is our camera going to go? But right now, I'm still using just this pr perspective viewport, and there is no camera yet, so we're going to need to go ahead and create a camera. So we'll create a camera, and I'll drop this down. We'll call this the close-up, or macro, so we can kind of see these guys as like this really, really you know, small like toys. So we've kind of neutered these guys a little bit. They're no longer the super powerful rock dudes, they're just little toy uh, guys. So with our camera visible here, we want to make sure that, again, the handle is turned on so that we can actually see what we're doing with it. And you should get this little uh, display handle where we can control the position of the camera and we can control the position of its target, uh, essentially kind of what it's pointing at. So I want to make sure that this is pointing at this the second crag dude right here. I'll just put it right on his face, so that'll be our in the center of our view. Now if I want to see what the camera sees, I'm going to go ahead and make a new viewport. We could set this so that we can see this camera in here, so we can see the macro camera here, but I'd like to be able to see kind of where it's being positioned and see the camera at the same time, so let's just uh, rotate this, so if we rotate around, it'll jump out of the camera, so we're no longer seeing it. I'm going to hold spacebar and press H so I can jump back in and see my scene here. So as soon as you start using the keyboard, 
shortcuts to navigate, it'll jump back out of the camera. We can see that it's now set to no cam. So I'm going to split this up into two views. So we've got one above and one below. And this one on the bottom, I'll set that to the macro camera so we can actually see what it's doing. If you want to navigate the camera, it's usually best to use either these little handles here, which you can see is kind of panning left and right like that. This one here will zoom in and out for you, which is handy. And then this one here will pan up and down, so we'll set this up a little bit. And then these little handles on the outside, that'll actually turn the camera for us. So you can move the camera like that. You can kind of position it where you want it, point it where you want it. We can see those those changes happening on the screen, or up in our, our viewport at the top. So we can position it like that, or we can position it up here in the top, where I can you know, take my my focal point here. We'll just move this out a little bit, so it's focusing right on that guy. Make sure that it's pointed right at the head. And you can see as I make changes here, in this top view, it's actually updating our camera in the view below. Now you can also use the keyboard shortcuts to actually navigate the camera, but I wouldn't recommend it because you you typically spend some time setting up your camera to get the right angle and everything, and then it's really easy to make a mistake and accidentally so kind of move something just by using the keyboard shortcuts that, that we get used to. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend using this normally, but you can set it up that way if you, you're more comfortable kind of positioning the camera like that. Uh, just click this little lock button on the side, and that'll lock the camera to the view. So now, if I hold Alt and kind of position the display, or position the frame, uh, using my keyboard shortcuts, now it's not going to mess things up for me. So, so another way of doing it, I guess, again, I would be careful with this because it is easy to kind of mess this up. Now we also want to think about our camera position in terms of the effect that we're trying to achieve. If we want to sell the idea that these are these little toys, typically things that are small, you're going to be looking down at them, like a mouse. You never think of a mouse like looking up at a mouse. Typically you're looking down at a mouse, or like a toy, you're typically looking down on it as it's sitting on a table. So just to kind of get that automatic idea that this is a tiny crag instead of a huge crag, we want to place the camera just a little bit up like this, just a little bit above uh, Crag. So I'm going to bring this in and just make sure that it's setting right on Crag's face. I'm going to unlock this, make sure that the lock is turned off so that if I rotate down here I'm not going to mess anything up. I can always jump back into our camera. So we will go ahead and pull this down just a little bit. We'll have the camera just real close, just for compositional uh, purposes. Bring it in just a little bit. So we're kind of high level with Craig, just a little bit above. So even if it's just a little bit above, having it just above Craig is going to sell that the idea that this is a small toy, not a huge monster. So now I want to set my focus, set the the depth of field. So I'm going to right click on this. We've got all these different different types of handles. I'm going to go to the focus handle. We can see this has changed a little bit. Right now the focus is right where we placed that uh, that handle, but I want to set the the depth of field to be very shallow. With a camera, you don't have, typically, not everything is, is going to be in focus. You're going to have pretty long depths of field, like for landscape photography, where, where pretty much everything is in focus. Uh, or you can also have very narrow or very short depths of field, where macro photography, typically if you look at macro photography of like insects and stuff, just a very small part, even of the insect, is in focus. We have just the insect's eye, and everything else is out of focus. And this is just kind of an aspect of of macro photography that we don't really think about, but it's there. And when we see that that blur, that shallow depth of field, it kind of tells us, oh, this is a really close up shot of something small. It just automatically uh, tells us that. One good example of what happens when you, you invert that is if you look at tilt shift photography, uh, it looks like a model, but it's actually a city. So they're, they're using that kind of depth of field to play with our perception. So, we've got our camera set up, and we've got our light set up, and now it's time to go ahead and look at what this looks like in a render. If you want to preview this, and you can do that, but my computer unfortunately kind of offsets stuff, you can use this render region. So if we use render region and then just drag a box around the part that we want to render, it'll take its sweet time, but it'll eventually show this little preview render in this area. Um, I'm not going to let it do that because 
you can set that up yourself and see what it looks like. I already know mine is going to be messed up and kind of offset down towards the bottom. You can see the little the corner of it there. So what we're going to use is the actual render view itself. So we've got our tabs up here at the top, scene view, animation, and then render view. So I'm going to click on render view and jump out over here. And we'll want to make sure that our camera is set. So first thing, set this instead of ROP camera. We're going to use that macro camera that we created earlier. And we can go ahead and click render and see what happens when this renders out. Now, depending on your computer, this will take longer or shorter, and depending also on how much stuff you have in the scene. Uh, this is... I'll go ahead and let this one render. I'll kind of speed through the other renders so that we don't have to wait for it to actually render out. But we can get a good idea of what this actually looks like. Um, the problem that it's immediately apparent though is that we're not seeing our background and the depth of field isn't working. So those are some settings that we're going to have to change and make sure that we set that up in the renderer. So to make sure that we see the background, I'm going to go into the environment light here. And you'll need to make sure that this little render light geometry box is checked. And that way it'll actually show the background for us. And if you want to see the depth of field, our depth of field is in the camera is already pretty much set up. Um, but what we, we need to do is make sure that in the render, it actually does that or it calculates that. So I'm going to change from the object view into the output view. And by changing into the output view, we have our render node here. And a render node has its own settings. And we're going to set this to, um, set this to render our images. So we're going to go from images or render our depth of field. So I'm going to set this from images to rendering, and we're going to just check this box for enable depth of field. You see now it's going to recalculate. Notice and we can see that it's it's already kind of blurring out this guy here in the foreground, and this part here is just the the only part that's actually in focus. So we'll let it render here. We can increase the the quality. We can increase the number of samples. If you want to get rid of some of the graininess, you can increase the number of samples and increase the number of of rays. Doing that will uh, increase your render time though, so just be aware of that. Um, graininess in renders is always a problem with, with proper ray trace renders, uh, so you'll need to, to kind of use your low settings when you're doing look dev and just checking to see what stuff looks like, making sure that you have all of your settings correct, and then once you've got everything dialed in, then crank these up. For the sake of time, I'm going to leave those set low and just look at how to actually save this out. So by default, it's going to save to our um, render folder that we've got in, in our project file. So right now I'm in the tutorials project folder, and this by default is going to go in this render folder. And if we just click Save Image, it should or render to disk. It should save out using our file name, so the, the hip name, which is uh, untitled at the moment and kind of add in some extra stuff for us, or we can save it out as a custom name. Uh, our file type is set to infer from file name. So from Photoshop and other applications, you typically have to tell it specifically what file type and the file name. In Houdini, you can just tell it EXR, JPEG, PNG, and using infer from file name, it'll actually create the file type for you. You can also specify if you want to use JPEG, PNG, etc. in here, but Usually just infer from file name is fine, and then make sure that you add your extension at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a custom name. It's already going into the render. I'm just going to call this render one close. And make sure to save the file type. Now, if you want to do post-processing on this in Photoshop, it's probably best to save it as an EXR. An EXR is going to be a high color depth image that has uh, much, much more information, a lot more that you can do with it than a JPEG or a PNG. If you're just saving it to the web, you don't want to do any post-processing, then you can use uh, PNG. I would recommend against JPEGs since JPEGs are lossy. If you save it out as a JPEG, every time that you save it, it's going to get a little bit less, uh, or it's going to get a little bit more compressed and look a little bit worse. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a uh, PNG. Just for the sake of time, I'm not going to do any post-processing on this. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I mean, we can still edit it. It's not like we can't edit it. It's just you get more options if you use EXR. Now, when we set that, it did start re-rendering again. So if you don't want it to change or kind of restart rendering every time you make a change, you can turn off this auto update and just let it it'll render out while you wait. 
So I've got my file name here set up. Make sure to that uh, you don't put any spaces. Always use underscores or dashes just to uh, make sure everything works. Also, make sure that your camera is set over here. Since I changed the name of my camera, it should typically pick this up. But if it doesn't, make sure that you set your camera over here. So I'm going to click this little thing here. Make sure that it's set to the macro camera. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to render to disk if you don't have that set. So we've got our correct camera. We've got our um, depth of field and everything set up. So you can go ahead and click render to disk, and it will save out an image into your renders folder. Now, you'll have to wait for this to complete. and and depending on your computer, it may take very little time, it may happen pretty quickly, or if you're using my computer, it's going to take 13 minutes for this to render. I'll make you sit here and watch this thing render out. I'll see you in the next video where we'll look at setting up a render for something that's very large with a lot of distance instead of a real close shot with very little distance. Alright, see you in the next video.